Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Pastor Goodrich. How are you doing? Good morning, Dr. Williams. Doing well, man. Doing well. Praising the man, Lord. This is such a privilege. Take us back a couple of months, man. We are here <laughs> again at Eyewitness. We are excited this Eyewitness Morning Devotional. For yep. the next 14 days, we're going to spend time in the Word of God early in the morning. It was great to see so many people. I saw somebody from Ontario, Canada, somebody from here in Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama. I also saw somebody from Canada and I think it was Guyana. And so all, literally all across the world, all across the globe, God is making an impact in this experience. And so we wanna say good morning, welcome to everybody. Make sure you get the sleep out of your eyes, you know, whether you're already getting ready or, or already on your way to work or wherever you're, uh, you may be. We just wanna say thank you for being with us. Um, before we get started, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity to come together. We thank you that you allow Pastor Gooders, myself, and so many others to be a part of this experience this morning. We ask that you will bless us, Lord. Let those who watch today, Lord, or those who may be even um, catching the rebroadcast, that you allow them to experience the power, fill them with your spirit so that we can have the courage, the power, um, and the conviction to witness and share our faith with others. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are excited about what God is doing. Now, if you missed a treat, I'm so glad you're with us today. Lester, yesterday, if you missed yesterday, go back and watch it. Pastor Snell talked about eyewitness, the importance of witnessing and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We had a phenomenal time. And we're going to have the same thing today. But before we get started, I have a couple of announcements. I want to make sure that we are all on the same page. Number one, this week, we don't have an actual book, but we do have a devotional guide that we want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to connect with. So you can download the devotional guide and not just you can download it. You can use a QR code that just put your camera. If you, some of you may have your smartphone, put it on camera. And if you just put it, put your camera, face your camera to this um, QR code, it will take you to the, to the um, where you can download it and you can put the bring it up on your phone, on your phone so that you can read it throughout the day. So please make sure that you take opportunity to do that. Also, what we'd like for you to do is if you could take a second to join, um, share this link so that you can share with others. So you may want to just put it in your chat or if you're those who are watching on Facebook, if you can make sure that you share it a couple of times so that everybody um, in your friend circle can be a part of it. That's kind of one of those things where we're talking about witnessing. You don't have to necessarily preach a sermon. You can share what God is doing on behalf of his people. Number three, we also think want you to do is be able to attend the Hope Rally. And this is a beautiful thing. We're, we're post-COVID and so we're able to get together. And so we are so excited coming to starting this Sabbath. Um, we are going to be moving forward um, every night, seven o'clock. You can attend virtually or in the Huntsville area, you can come to Oakwood University Church. So we want to make sure that you are here. But please, we're asking those who plan to attend so we can prepare properly that you pre-register at thebreathoflife.tv slash hope.tv hope slash dash rally dash 2022 backslash. So we'll read it one more time. Breath of, breath of life TV slash hope dash rally dash 2022. So please, if you are planning to attend in person, if you decide to show up, please make sure that you attend so that we can make sure we prepare properly because we want to make sure that everyone is there is going to have a phenomenal time and ready to move forward. So you download the devotional guide, you're sharing this link, you're planning to attend the Hope Rally, and you're going to bring a friend. Next, you're going to register for the Hope Rally, and then we want to make sure that you invite somebody to watch or attend what God is going to do. This, if there's any ever time in Earth's history that we need to focus on hope, where we can find something to be encouraged about, we want to make sure that you understand that this is the time. And so today... As we're planning or talking about hope, as we're talking about witnessing and the importance of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, Pastor Goodrich, the associate, one of the associate pastors of the Oakwood University Church, has provided us with a powerful presentation. I'm so excited. He's up and early, ready to go. He'll beat me online this morning. And so we're glad to have you with us. Pastor Goodrich, before you get started, I just want to have a quick word of prayer for you. And sure. ask God to be with us as you, know, you share the gospel. God, thank you so much for Pastor Goodrich. God, you've blessed him and you've allowed his journey in ministry to take him to a number of different places. But Lord, today you've given him a stop in his journey to pause with us to share what you have for us. Now we ask that you guide our hearts and our minds. Lord, that you'll remove any distractions, that you'll keep all technology um, operating smoothly. So at the end of the day, Lord, somebody can say, man, I learned more about Jesus and I want to connect with him with others. I ask that you guide our hearts and minds in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Goodrich, the time is yours. Share with us lessons from a supermarket. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Williams. All right. So 
Um, I, again, I want to say good morning and welcome. I'm glad that you've joined us. Um, hopefully you have downloaded the um, devotional guide. Um, and if you have, and hopefully you've read uh, the lesson today, um, I talked about lessons from a supermarket. And I made a confession that um, I love to, 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 to go shopping. Now, you know, now I don't have the money. You know, I'm just a, a, a humble preacher on a preacher's salary. But I, 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 I like the experience of shopping. I like especially um, grocery shopping. Um, going to supermarkets. And there is a fav, I do have a favorite supermarket. Um, and, you know, I, I, I love the experience in going, which is why it, it keeps me going back to the store. Not necessarily that they're the cheapest, et cetera, um, you know, um, et cetera. Um, but it's the experience that keeps me coming back. And as I was thinking about this, I realized that there are some uh, lessons that we can learn from my favorite supermarket. And, and these lessons are both from a uh, personal perspective, but then as a church, there are lessons that we can learn. And so I just want to kind of review that a little bit this morning as we're talking, as we're starting to get into the the nuts and bolts of, of, of witnessing, what it means to be a witness, how we can witness. Uh, Pastor Smell, Snell yesterday talked about the importance of witnessing, the fact that we are all been called to serve. We've been saved to serve. And so with that understanding, how can we go and be an effective witness? Um, our theme this uh, for this book is eyewitness. And, and I like to think of it from the perspective of that I have been uh, called to be a witness. I bear witness to the fact that I am an eyewitness to what God has done for me. And what he's done for me, I know he can do for somebody else. And so as we talk a little bit about some lessons that I've learned from a supermarket that we can apply when it comes to ministry. So from the personal perspective, in terms of as an individual, what individual lessons can we learn uh, from a supermarket? I think the first one is to be cheerful. So when I go into my favorite supermarket, nobody is looking sad. Nobody is, is looking down. They're not wearing the, the, the weight of the world on their shoulders. Now, I get it that they are paid to do this, but they are creating an atmosphere in which everybody is cheerful, everybody is happy, everybody is happy to be at work, they're happy to be there, and they are happy that you are there. And I think it's important for us as Christians, if we are going to be a witness, if we are experiencing the good news, then it should show on our faces, it should show on our demeanor. We should be cheerful people, smiling people, welcoming people. And so I think it's important that people see in us something that is bright and cheerful and sunny that they want to be a part of. Then the next thing is to be cordial. So I go into my supermarket and people speak to me. You know, that, you know, I go through the doors, you know, um, hi, welcome to, and I'm not going to give the shameless plug in terms of the supermarket that I um, go to, but let's just say uh, their slogan is shopping is a pleasure, where shopping is a pleasure. Um, so I, I go in and they actually speak to me. Hello, welcome to, you know, such and such. Um, they're friendly in terms of their demeanor, how they look towards me etc. And we should be friendly people. The Bible says a friend must show himself friendly. We should be, we should have an inviting demeanor where people want to engage with us. They want to meet us. They want to spend time with us because not only are we cheerful, but we're also cordial. But the third thing from a perspective of personal evangelism is we should be caring. When I go to my supermarket, they seem to care about me. 
and what I need to do. They, they seem to care about my experience and how it is. Are you finding everything okay? Is everything okay? Listen, all too often, when we see individuals, we may say, you know, and if they come to church or we see them in general, oh, how are you doing? And that individual starts to share with us how we're doing. Many times we just kind of seem to gloss over as if we are not listening or we're not caring about what they're saying. If they seem to be having a bad day, let's pause what we're doing to be able to acknowledge that and let them know that we see and that we care and maybe we can pray for them, etc. But having this caring demeanor Letting people know that we are interested, that we see them, that we're interested in what's going on with them. We may be able to help them in a situation. We may not be able, we may not be able to help a, a, a specific um, situation, but just having that sense of empathy towards them, having that sense of compassion towards people, letting them know that we're caring is something that. Um, will help us in our personal witness, in our personal evangelism, as we engage with individuals. The, the, the fourth thing in terms of lessons from a supermarket, from a personal perspective, is to be Christ-like. Now, when I say this, um, a, a supermarket employee does whatever needs to be done for the sake of of the company for the sake of the goal. And the goal is to have happy, satisfied, repeat customers. And in order to do that, they do whatever needs to be done. Maybe it's picking up trash. Maybe it's cleaning something here. Maybe it's um, taking the time to stop and to listen, etc. But there is no task that is too um, menial. There is no task that is too small. There is no task that is seemingly insignificant when it comes to my uh, favorite supermarket and the employees there. And this reminds me of Jesus Christ. This reminds me of uh, Philippians chapter two, where it talks about let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who humbled himself. Jesus understood the task at hand, and the task was to come and to save humanity by living a life, a perfect life, and dying as a substitute for us. And nothing was too small, nothing was too great for him to do as far as this task. And so whether it means um, us, whatever we may be called to do, whatever may be needed to be done in that situation or circumstance, just having the idea that there is nothing too small, there is nothing too menial, there is nothing too insignificant that I won't do to help somebody so that they can see Christ, so that they can experience Christ, and so that they can in, um, in, in give their lives to Christ. So there, there, there are four lessons that I, I, I want to bring out in terms of from a personal perspective, but then I want to switch gears from a church perspective now, because I believe there are four lessons that we can learn um, from a supermarket from a as a church, as a corporate body. And the first is cleanliness. So have you ever experienced where you've gone either in, and now it could be a, a store or maybe those of you who go out to eat, you've gone to a restaurant and you just go into the restaurant and you realize that it's not clean. There's garbage over the floor or maybe the garbage is overflowing or maybe you want to go and wash your hands first before you um, you know, order your meal. And so you go into the restrooms and the restrooms look unkept. 
it puts you up. I know for me, I really, you know, if if I realize that a restaurant is unclean, I won't eat there, no matter how good the food is advertised to be. But if it's unclean, I won't, I, I won't attend there. And so with, again, my favorite supermarket, they place an emphasis on cleanliness. They make sure that the place looks clean, that it looks bright, that it looks inviting, that there's, it's not crowded, but there's adequate space, etc. And so as a church, when we are preparing for an, and as we are preparing for an evangelistic meeting, but not even that, just our, because every worship service is its own evangelistic meeting. Every time we meet in church, it's an opportunity for individuals to hear the good news of Jesus Christ and for them to be invited to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so every time they come into the church, they should come into a clean, orderly environment. They should come into uh, somewhere where things are in place and it looks inviting. It, it's well lit, etc. cetera. Because um, we're told that people make an impression, the first impression that people have is the most important um, impression. And people make an impression as to whether they like something or don't like something within the first, say, four to six minutes. And so even as people are approaching our church, how is our parking lot? How is the building itself? Is it, does it look unkept? Does it look as if, um, um, you know, people, the, the people inside don't care about how it looks on the outside? So these, th this is the first thing that we can do as we are preparing our church to receive individuals from an evangelistic standpoint. The second thing is clarity. So I notice the difference when I go into my favorite supermarket that everything is nice and neat on the shelf. I don't have to go looking in terms of what something is or how it's labeled because they take the time even to make sure that every can and the label in the, of the cans are facing out and facing in the same direction. They make sure that the labels for the products are clear, that I know what the product is. I know where the product is, et cetera. And I believe that we can apply this same principle of clarity when it comes to our church and when it comes to individuals coming to our church looking for Jesus Christ. It should be clear who we are. It should be clear what we believe. Our messages should be clear. We shouldn't have mixed messages. On the one hand, we welcome people and, and we say that we want people to come. But then on the other hand, we make it difficult for them to, to meet Jesus. We, 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 we want to say on the one hand that we're a friendly um, group of individuals. But then on the other hand, we uh, look at people or talk to people um, in, in a, um, uh, an unfriendly way. But we want to make sure that what we believe, who we are, what we stand for, and what we are doing as a church is clear. There's no confusion. Everything is out in the open in terms of what we do and who we are. The third lesson that we can learn as a, as a corporate body, as a church, is choices. Now, one of the things that I like about my supermarket is they, they don't just have one item on the shelf. And so if it's cereal, um, they don't just have one brand of cereal or one type of cereal, but there are several choices for me. Those cereals that may be um, more kid friendly in terms of being, you know, sweet, um, a, a, a sugary, but they also have um, those uh, uh, choices that are more healthy. Um, they have uh, choices from um, the international section. So um, there's a cereal there that I used to eat uh, growing up in England. 
um, or you may have um, cereal from um, the Middle East, or you may have cereal from from other parts of Europe, etc., Sweden or or Scandinavian countries. But there are choices. And I want to suggest to you that within our churches, if we are going to be appealing to individual, there should be variety in our church. I know that there, there, there's sometimes there's tension in terms of when it comes to music or when it comes to styles, etc. But having a variety, having choices. So we, uh, yes, you may have a praise and worship song, but then we're also singing a hymn to be able to appeal to one set of individuals. Yes, we may have, um, you know, PowerPoint presentations or, or media and technology, but we also have, um, you know, whether it's, you know, physically reading from the Bible or it's, it's, it's referencing some other material. But in other words, let us have choices so that we can appeal to everybody. So when individuals come to our church, when they experience our worship service, there's something for everybody. There's something for the children. They're able to, to, to get a message for them. There's something for adults. They can get a message for themselves. There's something for youth. They can get a message for themselves. The more variety we have, the more choices that we have, is the more individuals that who are going to come and want to experience what we are offering as a church. And then the fourth thing uh, that we can learn from a supermarket, from my favorite supermarket, is to be customer service oriented. Now, this is a big one for me. Um, I, I, I am very attuned to being customer service oriented. And what does that mean? It means a number of different things. It means you do everything that you can do to make sure that your customer's experience is premium. You want to make them feel like they are seen, they are heard, that they are appreciated, and that they are valued. And whatever you need to do, you're willing to do that. So some, some, some key examples is to show and not tell. You know, sometimes there are other supermarkets that I, I may go to, and I may not know where a particular product is. And so I may ask one of the individuals, where would I find uh, this particular product? And typically they will say, oh, go to aisle 17. Um, it should be there. And then I'm left to wander off by myself, number one, to find where aisle 17 is, and then try to look on the left-hand side to where this product is. But what I like about my favorite supermarket is, even if I'm looking like I'm, um, I'm, I'm doubtful or I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant about something or like I'm trying to look for something, they will ask me, how may I help you? May I help you find something today? And if I say, oh, yes, I'm looking for a particular product, here, let me show you. And they will walk with me. They will walk with me to aisle 17. And then they will walk with me down aisle 17. And then when we get to the section where that product is, they will point out the different types of product in, 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 um, that I'm looking for. And then once I've decided, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take this one. They follow it up. Again, is there anything else is, um, that I can help you with? Can I help you find something else? This idea of being customer oriented is something that's important within our church. If you have an individual who comes to your church for the first time and they may be wondering where the bathroom is and you say, oh yeah, well, it's down the hall on the left. Instead of just telling them where it is, why not walk with them to show them and take the opportunity to befriend them, to get to know them, to find out their name, find out where they're from, thank them for coming, etc. You know, all that I'm saying here, this idea of, of lessons from a supermarket is basically how Jesus operated. Because Ministry of Healing, page 143, says Christ's method alone 
will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them, follow me. If we would simply follow the mind of Christ, the example of Christ, in how we live and what he did, then we would naturally exude the cheerfulness, the caring, the cordiality, the Christ-likeness. We would naturally, um, um, our, our environment would be clean. We would be, it would be clear in terms of what we're doing. And there would also be the idea of allowing people to come in and experience something where we uh, uh, um, uh, took care of their needs and we saw them and we appreciated them and it would enable them to come and it would enable them to be able to hear, be in an environment in which they're comfortable to be able to hear the word of God. And so this morning, I just, I, I just want to uh, bring before you, I just want to um, remind us simply to put on the mind of Christ, to follow the example of Christ, to do what Christ did. And if we did that, it, we would be naturally perfect witnesses perfect examples to allow others to know and to experience Jesus Christ. Man, Pastor Goodis, thank you so much for that reminder. You know, I, I've, I've, there's several stories here in Huntsville. I, I could pick, I know which ones aren't that way. I know the ones that are not customer friendly and, you know, they stick out. And unfortunately, churches are a lot like that. But if we are ensure that we are in a place where we can communicate the gospel in, where we can be, make sure our areas are clean, that we have that clarity of who we are, um, the choices are available and most importantly that we are customer service friendly, um, that we are intentional with heads on a swivel looking for people that we can help. It would make a huge difference in advancing the kingdom of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a time is, is short, but I do want to make sure we spend some time in prayer. And so those who are with us this morning, um, if you have a prayer request, we would like for you to add it to the chat at this time. We want to begin praying even now for those. We also have a prayer team that's on a regular basis, on a daily basis, making sure that they spend time in prayer and call each one of these prayer requests by name. So please, if you don't mind, just take a moment to put your name in the chat. If there's any prayer requests, please, 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 we want to make sure that we do that. Um, and while you're doing that, again, we want to let you know after we have prayer, we're going to give you an opportunity to find a devotional link. Um, you can find it on the Oakwood University website, OUCSDA.org. Or once we get done after our prayer, we'll put up the link one more time so that you can prepare for tomorrow. Remember, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6 a.m. Central Time. And then on Sabbath from 8, we start at 8 o'clock. So Sabbath and Sunday, we start at 8 o'clock. So you get a couple, a couple hours of, of rest on the weekend, but we are going to be together for the next 14 days. And so thank you for putting your prayer requests in the chat. We're going to bow our heads. And Pastor Goodrich, I'm going to ask if you will lead us in prayer this morning. Yes, certainly. Father, we want to thank you so much for the opportunity to live, to learn, and to love. We want to thank you for waking us up. We want to thank you for dying for us. But more importantly, we want to thank you for preparing to take us home. But Lord, we don't want to be selfish with this. We know that we want to go home with you, but we have friends, we have co-workers, we have neighbors, we have family members who we want to see them saved also. Lord, you have saved us. You have extended the invitation for us to choose you and to surrender our lives to you. And we recognize the difference that you have made in our lives. And we want to give somebody else that opportunity to uh, choose you so you can make a difference in their lives. But Lord, we want to remove every obstacle that would prevent them from hearing your word and from accepting you. And Lord, sometimes that's, we are the obstacle. 
in terms of how we are and how we live our lives. When we walk around with the weight of the world on our shoulders, it, it, lets, it, it gives off the impression to people that you are not able to take care of every situation that we don't have peace, that we are stressed, that we are worried instead of allowing you to take care of our burdens, knowing that you are able to do all things. Lord, when we fail to speak to people, when we fail to smile and, and be nice to individuals, when we, when we fail to show that we care about individuals, regardless of what you have done, it turns people off and it turns them away. And they say, well, if it hasn't made a difference in your life, then why should I try it? But Lord, help us to surrender, to have the mind of Christ. Allow us to be humble, to be able to do what needs to be done to be the people who you've called us to be so others will see who we are and want to know more about you because of us. Lord, I'm asking from a church perspective that you would enable us to have clarity in terms of what we believe and who we are and what we represent. I ask that you would allow us to exhibit this customer service mentality where we are here to provide a, a, an environment for individuals to hear the gospel, to experience Christ with as little distraction as possible. Lord, ultimately, I'm asking that you would allow us to do to others that which we would have them do to us. The same experience that we would want going into a new environment. Help us to create that experience for somebody else. Thank you in advance for what you will do. Forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and let us, beginning today, exhibit the traits of excellent customer service as we interact with others. These and other mercies we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Lessons from a supermarket. What a powerful presentation. Thank you so much, Pastor Goodrich, for kicking our Monday off and reminding us the importance of being intentional about loving other people and presenting areas and ways where we can love others. We have a few couple, few announcements we have before you before we let you go. Three things we need you to do. Number one, download the devotional guide. You can go to OUCSDA.org or you can go slash virtual online dash virtual dash services. And there you'll have an opportunity to download the devotional guide so you can be ready for tomorrow. While we're talking, I made sure I had it here on my computer. It takes only about a couple of seconds. So please make sure you go to OUCSDA.org backslash online dash virtual dash services. So please make sure you can do that right now and be ready for tomorrow morning service. We also want to let you know the Hope Rally starts this Sabbath. And so if you haven't already, please make sure that you plan that you register that you plan to come on and register. Um and go to breathoflife.tv backslash hope dash rally dash twenty twenty two. So please make sure that you if you're planning in the Huntsville area, plan to come on in um register at breath of life dot tv backslash hope dash rally dash twenty twenty two. And lastly, please share the link with others. You have opportunity to invite somebody. Today is Tuesday, tomorrow morning. We want to make sure that we um, recognize that each service is going to get gooder and gooder, better and better. So please, if you have not already done so, share the link with somebody. Let somebody know how good it's been. And even today, they can go back and watch this this free broadcast on YouTube or on Facebook. If you would like to download the Eyewitness Devotional, you can utilize the um, QR code there. And please, please, please make sure you take a moment to just go on your camera. Put your camera to the um, QR code there on the left, and it will pull up the exact link to where you need to go to download your presentation or your the book for this week and we're working with for um, this week. Thank you so much for joining us today, Pastor Gertz. Thank you so much. I believe you're up next tomorrow as well, right? Yes, yes, sir. Re all right, all right. Two. Re re all right, all right. Chapter two. <laughs> so we're in chapter two tomorrow. So please make sure you join with us. Thank you so much for being with us. May God bless you and keep you. Let us pray, pray that His face shines upon you, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Central Time. God bless you. See you then. Amen.